I absolutely hate running. I think is is the worst thing ever. I'm sorry if you love running, but I just absolutely hate running. My idea of running the perfect marathon would be to cross the line in a finish car. In a <laughs> car. Um, and a man named Fred Bloors in the 1904 Olympic marathon actually beat me to that dream. Now, I know that we probably all know what a marathon is, but I'm not sure that we know much about the 1904 Olympic marathon, and that is why I'm here. I'm here to enlighten you about it a little bit. Um, the 1904 Olympic marathon was a bit tangled, it was a bit messy, and I plan to show you on how tangled and messy it was by how the competitors were chosen, how the course, how difficult and terrible the course was, and how that caused the horrible results at the end of it. Um, so most of the competitors were chosen off of previous races that they had won, such as like the Boston Marathon. Um, Karen Abbott from the Smithsonian Magazine described most of these competitors as, quote, assorted oddities. And Abbott also described Fred Lors as an all-American bricklayer that he had to train at night because of his job and that the only reason he was really in the race was because he had placed in a, five, in a random five mile long race. And then uh, Brian Cronin from the LA Times described another man, Thomas Hicks. Um, now Thomas Hicks comes more into the end when I talk about results and we honestly don't know that much about him. All we know is that he's from England, but he was running for the US. Um, and then Sturmer and Armitage from ABC News described a man named Felix Cardewal. He was a Cuban, he was a former mailman, and so in order to raise money to go to this race, he um, had to show off his talent and people had to raise money for him. Unfortunately, when he got to the US, he went to straight to New Orleans and lost all of his money that he had gotten, um, and so he ended up having to hitchhike a ride to the marathon and showed up in a long shirt, long pants, and a beret on his head, not good running clothes. <laughs> and uh, Sturmer and Armitage said, quote, a sympathetic bystander found a pair of scissors and helped turn his pants into shorts before the race began. So that is how all the competitors, they're not very great. Um, and they're all kind of, I would say, assorted oddities is a good way to put it. But they do have one thing in common, and that was the conditions under which they had to do, uh, or under which they had to go through in this marathon. So Abbott describes that only 14 out of 32 people made it across the finish line. That should tell you something about the conditions. So Handsome, from the podium runner, says that a man named Jen, James Sullivan uh, deci decided that it was a good idea to deprive the athletes of water during the marathon because uh, water deprivation at the time was a very interesting study in 1904, and they just thought it would be a good idea that this was the perfect opportunity to uh, see the results. And so the athletes only got water at the 6 mile and the 12 mile. Um, during the race, and so that's also absolutely terrible. And Hansen um, or Abbott also described that the terrain that they were running on was rocky, it was dirty. Um, they also didn't suction it off, and so they had to dodge in between bystanders walking by. They had to go up the hills. It was terrible. Um, and then also, Hansen describes Thomas Hicks, who I mentioned at the beginning. He's from England, running for the U.S. So he really wanted water by the 17th mile. I don't blame him. But his two-man crew decided instead of giving him water to give him strychnine, um, which is also known as rat poison. But at the time especially, they believed that strychnine would be some sort of performance enhancer, which kind of can be. But uh, they gave him too much, and so he started hallucinating. So these are a lot of the conditions that these athletes were um, going through. And so this led to a lot of desperate attempts to try and cross the finish line, just to get across. And so Cronin Lors said that um, Thomas, yes, said that Fred Lors, sorry, uh, technically won the race, technically. But he ended up, after um, nine miles in, he ended up getting into a car and driving the rest of the way throughout the marathon. I don't blame him. Again, I would do the same thing. 
Um, and the St. Louis Post Dispatch, in the article "Controversy Over Slow Times," marked the 1907-1904 Olympic Marathon. Um, they had almost so the car broke down, um, and so then he had to run the rest of the way across the finish line. And so all the crowd saw was that he had just run across the finish line. So they almost crowned him the winner. Officials found out about it pretty quickly, and so they disqualified him. <laughs> Um, and so then the next person, believe it or not, Thomas Hicks, the man who was hallucinating, ends up being the winner um, by not, not under the best conditions. So he was hallucinating even worse. And um, <laughs> Hansen describes that Thomas Hicks had to be carried across the finish line by the same crew who had given him the strychnine. So he won by being carried across the line, and he has never done another Olympic event since then. Um, and then the last one, uh, Felix Cordoval, it's also from the source Hansen. Um, he placed fourth, which is very surprising because he, um, during the middle of the race, got hungry. So he ran to an orchard, ate some apples. The apples were rotten, so he got cramps. So then he took a nap, and then he woke up and ended up placing fourth. Um, in the Olympic race, which I think is pretty astounding. Um, and so, as you can see from how the competitors were chosen based off of the first, based off of everything, how the competitors were, competitors were chosen, how the terrain and um, the conditions of the race were, and then also about the results of the race, you can tell that it was very messy and they did not know what they were doing. Um, and so I would still say that this just convinces me more how much I hate running. Um, but thank you.